McLaren has revealed the latest car in its Ultimate Series, the McLaren Senna. While not quite a successor to the P1 Hybrid Hypercar, the Senna is a limited production, track-focused coupe packing 789 HP and named after one of the greatest Formula One drivers of all time. The McLaren Senna, of course, is named after three-time F1 world champion Ayrton Senna, who died in a crash during the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix. Senna was racing for Williams at the time, but he spent five years with McLaren prior to that. The sports car builder got the Senna family's blessing to use his name for the car. Our family is extremely proud of the naming of the new Ultimate Series McLaren Senna. This is the first project that really connects with Ayrton's racing spirit and performance, said race driver and Senna's nephew Bruno Senna, in a release. The McLaren Senna honors my uncle because it is so utterly dedicated to delivering a circuit experience that allows a driver to be the best they can possibly be. While we've no doubt the late Ayrton Senna would be honored to have his name on such a track-focused car, we wonder what he'd think of its design. If you think the Senna looks like a 720s with a bunch of extra bodywork tacked on, you're sort of on the right track. The car is underpinned by a further developed version of the 720s carbon fiber monocoque, called Mono Cage 3. McLaren promises that all of the bodywork is functional, designed to deliver downforce and aerodynamic balance. Every body panel on the Senna is made of carbon fiber, which helps bring the weight down to 2,641 pounds, without fluids. That makes this the lightest McLaren road car since the F1, according to the sports car builder. Yes, you can drive it on the street, though McLaren says the Senna is legalized for road use, but not sanitized to suit it. The Senna's true purpose is to be the ultimate McLaren track concentrated car for the road, and the emphasis clearly is on the track concentrated bit. The Senna packs a version of McLaren's twin turbo 4.0 liter V8 that produces 789 HP and 590 lbft of torque. The engine is codenamed M840TR, and is the most powerful ever offered in a McLaren road car. The mill features a flat plane crankshaft and dry sump as well as lightweight internals and twin-scroll turbochargers with electronic waste gates. The engine, which is mated to a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission, gives the McLaren Senna a power-to-weight ratio of roughly 659 HP per ton. McLaren says the Senna features next-gen active aerodynamics, including the front splitter, rear double diffuser, and 48-inch tall rear wing. The rear clamshell was designed to both cool the engine and provide optimum downforce, with gurney flaps placed in front of step louvers that direct air to the sides of the body. The rear wing is hydraulically actuated and constantly adjusts based on what the car is doing. It has a total surface area of more than 1,007.5 square inches and can act as an air brake. McLaren's Race Active Chassis Control 2 RCC2, hydraulic suspension setup is used in concert with the already stiff carbon fiber monocoque to deliver exceptional cornering ability. The system features a double A-arm suspension with hydraulically interconnected dampers and hydraulically adjustable anti-roll bars. It also utilizes variable damping and ride height adjustment tech from the P1. Primary suspension settings include comfort, sport, and track, but a race mode can be engaged via a roof-mounted switch. The Senna rides on specially developed Pirelli P0 Trofeo R tires, and gets carbon ceramic brakes at all four corners. Inside, you'll find the bare minimum of creature comforts. Exposed carbon fiber dominates the interior, and the seats can be upholstered in either Alcantara or leather, depending on customer preference. Controls are also minimalist to reduce clutter, with a buttonless three spoke steering wheel and vertical central screen front and center. If you have stuff to transport, take a different car. The McLaren Senna has only enough room for two helmets and race suits behind the seats. Being an ultimate series car like the P1 and P1 GTR, the Senna will have a limited production run of just 500 units. Each one will be priced in the UK at £750,000, roughly $1,003,950, including taxes. In 1954, 
Fiat revealed a very interesting concept car to the world. And by interesting, we of course mean mad. It was called the Fiat Turbina, and was powered by a gas turbine. In 2017, that's now, Pagani has unveiled a one-off wearer that pays tribute to Fiat's moment of madness. It is called the Lampo, and somewhat depressingly, it is not powered by a gas turbine. But it is clothed in the Turbina's famous livery. For that, you must thank Lapo Elkan, creative director at Garage Italia Customs, who, together with Horatio Pagani, has rendered the Huera into a thing of futuristic wonder. Surprisingly, we're told, the two cars have less different shapes than you might imagine. Where the original Turbina used one coat paint, the Huera gets a carbon fiber fabric, which apparently ensures the color is always lively and vivid. Then come a host of transparent paints for the body and details, like the Italian flag on the rear wheel arches. Fiat's original gold used in the Turbina sign is here used to treat parts of aluminium around the car, and in the wheels. Underneath said wheels you'll find monster Brembo carbon discs with bespoke lightning finishing. Inside, you get hand braided brown leather, and anodized aluminium elements. This particular Huayra gets the Tempesta Pack 2, larger front openings, plus new aero elements on the front splitter and sills. Lessons learned from the Mad Huayra VC have also been applied here too, including carbon fiber elements used in the chassis. No word on engine power, but it's not a gas turbine. It is in fact a 6.0 liter V12, good for around 750 bhp. So, you know, it's plenty. Horatio's pleased with it. A beautiful and very interesting exercise which allowed us to move away from the shoreline, to dare and to discover more, he said. Lampo's pump too. We have chosen Lampo, Lampo is the Italian word for lightning, another powerful element of nature and the prelude to something unexpected and always magically different, he said. It certainly is unexpected. BMW is returning to Le Mans, and it's doing so with a racing version of the new 8 Series Coupe. More specifically, the M Division's M8 version. And this is it. We've had glimpses of the M8 GTE in testing before, but never so short on disguise. As well as showing us what the race car will look like, it also gives us a good look at the road-going M8, too. We suspect its arches won't be as wide, nor its arrow as wild. But there's a hint of the aggression we can expect over the Svelte 8 Series Coupe. Power for both road and race car is likely to come from a turbocharged V8 engine, sounding a bit like this. The M8 GTE's latest test has taken place at Daytona in the US, and it was official race testing ahead of January's 24 hours of Daytona, too. So the M8 was amongst its future competitors on track, on the circuit where it will make its motorsport debut in little over a month. Exciting the data gathered in the USA will be used to work on fine-tuning in Munich before more tests take place in the USA before Christmas, said BMW. In four weeks' time, we'll see the car again when it partakes in the roar before the 24 hours, the official IMSA preparatory test for the race at Daytona on January 27th and 28th. In June, it will race at the LE Mans 24 Hours, Europe's headline endurance race and a place where BMW will be keen to make a strong return, with Aston Martin, Ferrari, Ford, and Porsche to beat. Reckon BMW stands a chance.
lots of infamy was bred from the 1990s Japanese modified car scene, among it an outfit by the name of Top Secret. You may have heard about the exploits of company boss Smokey Nagata in his flagship, a gold-painted, 900 bhp Toyota Supra. In the winter of 1999, he shipped his ultra-modded Supra to the UK, and set about smearing the south of England in rubber from tortured rear tires. When that became boring, he hit a claimed 197 miles per hour on a stretch of the A1M motorway in the Midlands at 4 a.m. in the rain. Arrested and deported shortly afterward, the top secret Supra unofficially holds the dubious record of the fastest speed ever reached by a car on a public highway in Britain. Needless to say, it's not something you should go looking to beat. However, if you'd like a slice of that era of Japanese tuning madness, we have good news. The top secret Supra is up for auction in Japan, albeit in a guise even more extreme than during its illegal activity on British soil. It's streamlined, air smoothed nose looks quite different from a factory Supra's smiling face, and beneath it we find a V12 originally housed in Toyota's retro luxury limo, the Century. Upgraded from sump to heads and fitted with two turbochargers, it develops a claimed 943 bhp. All of which goes to the rear wheels via a six-speed manual gearbox. Wonder if it's a handful? In 2008, this top secret Supra hit a top speed of 222.4 miles per hour on the constant curve of Nardo's circular test track in southern Italy. Well, it did have nitrous oxide boost to hell. Oh, did we not mention the nitrous? Yeah, this thing's got the quintessential fast and furious key to speed. Too soon, Junior. There's no price provided for this Japanese automotive outlaw, possibly because it's wanted all over the world by different police departments for several outstanding speeding tickets. Would you be tempted? Holy moly. That looks angry. Quite. Meet the Exorcist, John Hennessy's take on the Camaro ZL1. And his answer to Dodge's unhinged. 840 bhp wheelie popping demon. Ah, I see what they did there, exorcist vs demon, very clever. But what exactly is it? Using Chevrolet's juiced up ZL1 Camaro as a base, that's the angrier, quicker version of the humble American muscle car, Hennessy has given it even more power to make it even quicker. John and his team have gone to work on the same supercharged, 6.2 liter LT4 engine from the Corvette Z06, that normally produces 640 bhp and 640 pounds foot of torque, and turned it all the way up to four figures. Yep, clog your right foot into the carpet and you'll experience 1,000 bhp at 6,400 rpm and 966 pounds foot of torque at 4,400 rpm. Best hold on tight as when equipped with the optional drag radial tires, this exorcist will see off 0 to 60 miles per hour in under 3 seconds and tramp the quarter mile in less than 10 seconds. The exorcist upgrade, handily denoted by a new decal package, is transferable across both the normal 10-speed ZL1 and the fightier, track-focused 1LE. The 1LE of course, is the quicker version of the quick version of the humble American muscle car. Can you quickly remind me about the differences between the ZL1 and the 1LE please? Well, compared to the standard ZL1, the 1LE is 3 seconds faster around General Motors 2.9 mile, 18 turn Milford Road course test track. So expect a reasonable chunk to be taken out of the ZL1 S 7 minutes 29.60 S Nürburgring time, too. And that's before even more power has been added. Something Chevy didn't feel necessary to do, but John obviously did. The other key differences between the regular ZL1 and the ZL11 LE are mostly chassis and aero based. Oh, and it's got a 6 speed manual with rev matching, with a shorter 6th gear to make it racier, instead of the 10 speed option. That'll please the purists. The DSSV dampers developed by Multimatic for the previous Gen Camaro Z28 track monster have been fitted, some of the finest dampers this side of a race car, and not only do they dramatically reduce weight at each corner, 
over 2.5 kilograms a pop, they also have a properly ingenious and super simple camber adjustment system on top of the towers. With just one spanner you can change it from road to track, adding an extra 1.5 degrees of negative camber, doubling the street modes 1.5 deg, in just a few minutes. Allied to 10 mm of front ride height adjustment in either direction and a three-way adjustable rear stabilizer bar, you should be able to dial it into your preference quickly and, for once, relatively simply. Sure looks like it's got some aero. You're not wrong. There's a bigger front grille and the daytime running lights are deleted to save weight and further improve airflow. The splitter grows and gets a pair of dive planes, too. At the back, the ZL1S spoiler grows into a wing capable of generating 136 kg of downforce at 150 mph. Then there's that huge carbon fiber wing on the rear deck as well as air deflectors and dive planes on the front fascia to stick the Camaro to the track. So what has Hennessy done? Given it extra oomph thanks to a larger, higher flowing supercharger and intercooler system producing 14 psi of boost pressure. The factory cylinder heads have also been ported, the cams half upgraded, long tube stainless steel headers fitted, and the induction system made freer flowing. There's also a quick ECU flash for maximum go and a remap of the 10-speed gearbox, if you have it, to make it swap cogs even faster. But two-pedal donor cars require a transmission upgrade to handle all that extra grunt, which comes to the tune of $9,950. That's on top of the 1,000 bhp engine upgrade and graphics, which total $55,000. If you don't have a ZL1 already, don't worry. You can buy a base exorcist from John for $119,000. Anything else? Well, there's a choice of superchargers, either a 2.9 liter positive displacement or centrifugal supercharger. Then there are the options, the drag pack features a pair of optional 20 inch wheels with sticky 315-3020 nitto drag radial tires, a drive shaft upgrade, floor jack and toolkit. That'll be $8,995. Then there is the optional road race pack featuring 20-inch lightweight Hennessy wheels with Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. That'll be $6,995, please. What's it like? Bloody mega. Pognacious and angry yet communicative and controllable. We know this is high praise, deservedly so but you could think of the Exorcist as a Porsche GT3 Rs with anger management issues. And daddy issues. And, well, lots of other issues. It's a real fighter, something you quickly realize as you fire the engine into life and it rocks back and forth on its engine mounts like it's demented. That's when you know you're in something serious. Though the notion of 1,000 bhp sounds terrifying, it's an incredibly easy car to drive and doesn't feel wildly overpowered. It's largely due to how well the car is set up to start with. Something you instantly feel as soon as you take it on the road. It's not juddery and even though the ride is firm, the damping is incredibly controlled and capable, you can really lean on it. And it loves for you to attack. The front end grip is outrageous and you're more likely to spin before you get anywhere near understeer. But the sensational chassis and steering allows the Meteor engine to shine through as you can concentrate on what it's doing. The two superchargers offer two very distinct and differing characteristics. The positive displacement blower delivers a lump of torque a lot lower in the rev range, operating very much like how a turbo would. This tricks your brain into thinking the Exorcist is more powerful than it is, as you get a wallop of torque from the get-go. The centrifugal supercharger is a lot more linear and serves up its power and torque a lot higher in the rev range, around 5-7,000 rpm. It's also a lot noisier, with a bigger blow-off valve huffing and puffing away with each throttle actuation, but also an amplified version of that traditional Wilhelm scream of supercharger whine. An utterly addictive trait. If you're more of a street cruiser, we'd recommend the positive displacement, especially on an auto non-1LE spec, but if you're hitting the track in the more focused splitters and wing Camaro, 
go for the centrifugal. Grip isn't an issue either way. Well, in the nice warm, dry ambient temperatures of Texas. The Eagle F1 Supercar 3Rs, 305 fronts and 325 rears, performed flawlessly after being pounded around the roads, and if they did break traction, it wasn't quite the snap and brace for impact we were expecting. Rather, quite predictable and easy to gather back up. Is it better than the Demon? It's different. Where Dodge claims that the Demon is a good all-rounder thanks to plenty of grip from fat, sticky tires at each corner, we all know its real party trick is popping wheelies in a straight line. I'm in no doubt that the Exorcist 1 LE will lap a track faster than the Demon, but will it beat it in a straight line? Probably not. It doesn't have the sophisticated technology or development that's gone into the Demon with things like the trans brake, torque reserve, clever cooling, and ECU race fuel maps. The Exorcist just doesn't feel as special as the Demon, largely because it is just a tune-up, rather than a dedicated build. But that doesn't mean you should discredit it. Getting them together would be very interesting, and suck the planet dry of fuel, but the Exorcist feels more incensed than the Demon more of the time, which is sometimes how you want a muscle car to feel. Plus, getting your hands on one is a lot easier than a Demon. Since his controversial departure from Lotus in 2012, former CEO Danny Bagher has quietly worked his way back into the auto business. Aries Design, founded by Bagher in 2014, specializes in megadollar reworks of high-end luxury cars for customers who want to drive something absolutely unique. Now Aries Design is getting into the production business. Sort of Dot Project Panther is a carefully crafted homage to the iconic De Tommaso Pantera, to be built around Lamborghini Huracan mechanicals. Styled by Romanian designer Mihai Panatescu, the car will reportedly be constructed in Italy at Aries Design's new 190,000 square foot factory in Medina. Production numbers will be very limited. Project Panther is one of what Bagger says will be a series of limited edition coach-built cars to be designed, engineered, and built at the new factory. Others already announced include the X-Raid, a rebodied Mercedes-Benz G-Class, and a coupe version of the Bentley Mulls N, with more to come. These cars won't come cheap, pricing for the X-Raid reportedly starts at more than half a million dollars. <laughs>